So um, I am going to open in prayer. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We thank you for the goodness of your mercy, for the goodness of your world and all the gifts that nature offer. Father, I pray that as we take this time with you together today, that you would join us, that we would experience a touch from you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, this is possibly going to be a little awkward as I still try to keep my eye on anybody joining um, via Zoom, but I'll do my best. Um, so today, there was one word that kept coming to me during the week as I was preparing, and that was the word imminence. And I have been really, really enjoying this book by A.W. Tozer. And there's a chapter in it. If I could show you, see, see all the little foldies. <laughs> In that chapter, I had to fold down the page on just about every page. Um, but there was a, a chapter that he talked about the imminence of God. He called it the universal presence, but the word imminence um, stuck with me more. So that's the word I'm going to use. And, um, and it, it's a concept that we're all aware of, I'm sure. We know that God is with us always. His word says that repeatedly um, in different places. But I feel like on this journey, um, it, it has taken on a different meaning to, to simply reflect on that and to meditate on that concept. What does that mean for him to be with us always? Um, this is uh, one of the scriptures that came to mind from one, one, Psalm 139. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. I don't know if uh, you've all been watching The Chosen. Uh, Boyd and I have been enjoying that series. And, and Matthew is on a journey to become wise like the other guys. He feels like he's out of the loop. He doesn't have the education and the training that they had. And, um, and he feels like he's out of the loop. And this is one of the verses that he is given. It's his first verse that he's given to soak in and meditate on and um it's it's kind of amusing to watch but it's also it's also uh, very revelatory to to think about um that that this that this concept can be such a powerful uh source of re reflection so the point is that god is present with us always uh we cannot escape him or be without him and yet we certainly can feel like we are without him. Um, how does this happen? If it's not true, if it's not true that we are alone, why is it that we so often feel alone? Um, I had one friend who every morning, she said she sensed the presence of God in her devotions. And I was quite jealous <laughs> because I was not. <laughs> I was definitely... Um, I, I was more, you know, it would be the sporadic monthly or every six months or, or something feeling like I was actually connecting. Mostly I was dutifully doing my devotions and following God as diligently as I could. And, and I was just a little bit miffed that, that, that she was having this encounter with God every day and I wasn't. And why wasn't I? How can that not how can that happen if it's not the truth? Um, so that was another trigger, really, um, in, in this series of triggers for myself on this journey um, to seek God's presence very intentionally and, and look for more of an experience of God. Um, Genesis 28, Jacob is on a journey uh, to go get his wife. And he lays down to sleep in the wilderness with a rock for a pillow. And he ends up having a dream of the stairway with the angels ascending and descending. And, um, and he has this vision and this revelation about, um, about his many descendants and about how God is going to lead him and be faithful to him and bring him back to his home. 
And when Jacob awakes from his sleep, he says, surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware of it. And he was afraid. He said, how awesome is this place? There is none other like the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. So you have again that, that commingling of, of fear and awe and wonder um, in experiencing the presence of God and having the revelation of the presence of God. And, uh, and where was he? He, he was in the, in the wilderness with a rock for a pillow. And God was there, but he knew him not. And so I think that um, for each of us, we can be in a wilderness or we can be um, in our comfy homes or in our cars or wherever, but wherever, wherever we are, he is there. And so how do we sort of recenter our lives that that becomes a reality? Um, we're on a journey and perhaps we have a goal in this journey and perhaps we don't know what our goal is, but we are journeying. Um, but we want to have an awareness of God's presence. So I'm going to start the quoting from Tozer, um, page 60 of this wonderful book. It says, the presence and the manifestation of the presence are not the same. There, cannot, there can be one without the other. God is here when we are wholly unaware of it. He is manifest only when and as we are aware of his presence. On our part, there must be surrender to the spirit of God for his work to show us the father and the son. If we cooperate with him in loving obedience, God will manifest himself to us. And that manifestation will be the difference between a nominal Christian life and a life radiant with the light of his face. And uh, I think we've all experienced <laughs> God being present and us being wholly unaware of it. And what we want is the manifestation of his presence and the Christian life that is radiant with the light of his face. Like Moses, when he came down from Mount Horeb, um, he had to wear a veil over his face because his skin was actually glowing and he was too bright for the people to look at. I, I, I just have always, ever since I was a child, been just marveled at that. What does that mean? Like, was it actually too bright? Um, was it, was it a physical brightness? It appears that it was a physical brightness because he used a physical instrument to, to dim it so they could stand to be around him. Um, but this, this essence of, of residual glory from being in the presence of God was so great that the average person couldn't look at him and, and with their physical eyes. That is, that's just amazing. So on this journey, we're not looking for something that doesn't exist, but we're looking for something that we have so far missed or have only had occasional glimpses of. Um, and we want more, which is why we're here. And I hope that all of us have had some glimpses. I hope that we're not all coming without any experience of God. And, and I doubt that we are because, um, because he really is the one that initiates that. So that takes me to another Tozer quote. <laughs> um, our pursuit of God is and will be successful just because he is forever seeking to manifest himself to us. Always he is trying to get our attention, to reveal himself to us, to communicate with us. We have within us the ability to know him if we will, but respond, will but respond to his overtures. And this we call pursuing God, responding to his overtures is us pursuing. We know we will know him in increasing degree as our receptivity becomes more perfect by faith and love and practice. And that's where we are here. This is, this is a time to practice being in the presence of God and practice different ways to seek his presence and uh, become more sensitive to his presence and tune ourselves. Um, I think it was Brad Jerzak that talked about it as though you're uh, a radio that's out of tune. And so as we, as we grow in this and as we push forward in seeking him, we're, we're basically tuning our radio um, to try and, and get, receive what he is trying to send, what he is desiring to send. So don't get discouraged, keep practicing, 
if if the times of practice that you've had so far have been uh, bland and um, empty, um, don't give up. Keep keep trying. Keep reaching out. And remind yourself that you are never alone. You are always with him. He's always with you. There's just a fog that needs to lift. And so we're, we're praying for the sun to break through the fog and, and break it up so that we can experience him in a new way. Um, I'm, the, uh, today's practice time is going to be on praying with imagination. Um, so again, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Um, we're basically going to um, invite the Holy Spirit to have authority in our imagination um, and invite him to give us pictures or words or how to, like the one of the examples in, in this uh, book by Sharon Garlow Brown was um, they were reading a gospel story. And so the, the time of reflection was emphasizing, what are, you, what are you seeing? Imagine this setting that Jesus is in. He's, he's going to be um, in this little blurb. He is healing someone. And what does the setting look like? What do you think the streets would look like? What do you think Jesus would look like? What do you think it would feel like? Would it be hot, windy, cold, dusty? Um, is it a marketplace? Is there smells? You know, so really trying to delve into and, and give permission for uh, the senses to activate. And um, so that's, that's one way. Um, we're not going to be using a, a gospel story, but I think that, I think that this type of um, um, imaginative prayer has, has scared people uh, in the church in the past because, because we're worried that somebody's going to try to create new doctrine from what they're revealed, uh, what is revealed to them, or um, people are going to try to say that everything that they imagine and sense is from God. And we can't say that. Um, that simply isn't true. It all has to be lined up with scripture in the end. It has to be tested with scripture. Um, but at the same time, God developed us. He created us to be creative beings. He gave us all of our senses and he gave us our imaginations. And I think that uh, he gave us everything he gave us so that we could use those things for his glory. And so this is just another way to delve into some of the gifts that he's given us and, um, and practice um, using creativity in our in our imagination and in our prayer life. Um, let's see here. Okay. So I am going to, I think that's all I have to say. <laughs> it's a very short talk time, isn't it? <laughs> it seemed like it was going to be more than it is. Um, anyway, Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I have, I have Psalm 139 verses 7 to 10 that I want to read to you. And again, I'll read it repetitively every few minutes to um, give you time to refocus. And um, I want to first just walk through the verse with some... Um, examples of questions for how you could potentially expand on it, um, potentially use your imagination in there. Um, so I'm going to read through those first. So if you want to have your journals handy, um, I don't know if it's up to you whether you want to be writing these notes down or whether you want to just sit in the moment and experience it. But uh, we will be um, going through the verses. I'll read through these questions with the verse at first, so you kind of have an idea of, of different ways to examine the, the different phrases of the verse. Um, and then I'll just read through the, the scriptures themselves um, a few times. So this is the pre-run, <laughs> rerun, pre-run. <laughs> so this is, the, this is the scripture, Psalm 139, verses seven to 10. Where can I go from your spirit? 
Where can I flee from your presence? Think about where you have gone. Where have you tried to go? Have you tried to go anywhere? Have you tried to flee God at any time in your life? Was it in rebellion? Was it in fear? Was it in anger? Can you remember the place? Can you remember the feelings? Is there a place or a time that you have tried to flee from the spirit of God, from his presence? Verse 8, if I go up to the heavens, you are there. And to me, the heavens are a place of exaltation, a place of joy and beauty where you have been. Where have you been that fits that description? Where have you been where the beauty has so overwhelmed you um, that you could sense the presence of God? Did you sense him? If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. The depths are a place of to me, again, dissolution, sin, darkness, indulgence. Do you realize that God is there with you also? Can you see him? So in your past, in your memories, where is the darkest depths of a place that you can remember being in? Emotionally, physically, um, a relationship that you got yourself into or um, something that was completely accidental but dark devastating god was there with you then did you sense him did you know that if you didn't then can you now sense that he was with you if i rise on the wings of the dawn if i settle on the far side of the sea these are examples, again, of excessive beauty in nature and unimaginable distance. Um, still, he is there. Is there a place of great beauty that stands out where you sensed him? Or a distance, a place of distance or foreignness? Is there a place where you have felt farther from everything familiar and yet God's presence was with you? I doubt that anybody has actually been into outer space yet which is the farthest i can think of <laughs> but at the same time with a little bit of traveling that i've done um sometimes being in a foreign country you feel very distant and um so anyway those are just thoughts that came to me on on exploring that verse 10 even there your hand will guide me your right hand will hold me fast so biblically the right hand symbolizes the imminence of god and being honored could this mean that even if we are fleeing God or making our bed in the depths, that God still desires to establish in us, with us, a place of proximity, a place of honor? Maybe you have your own questions as we read, as I read through that, that, that come to you. But those are just some examples for how you might want to explore these verses and um so let us take that time now and get comfortable um pay attention to what your body's doing take deep breaths try to let go of the tension the pressure that you're experiencing anywhere physically emotionally um and let's let's invite the Holy Spirit to join us in this time now. And like I said, feel free to sit with your journal and take notes quietly or or just lay down and reflect on the verses. So Psalm 139. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. I'll give you a few minutes.
wherever you have been, wherever you are, wherever you are going, he has, is, and will be with you. You have never been alone. If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast.
Where do you want to go? Where do you want to leave? Is there some place you want to go? Or is there some place you want to leave? He will go with you. You cannot leave him behind. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast.
Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. He is always guiding. He is always holding us fast, tightly to himself. A few, few minutes to wrap up and then we can share some thoughts, experiences. So I would like to hear from you folks, if there was any, um, anything that came to you in this time that you would like to share or anything that struck you as um, new or just exciting, especially interesting. Anyone? Dion was scribbling away, but maybe she doesn't want to share. I'm just looking through to see if there's actually anything in here. Anybody out in Stony or online that would like to share? Well, I'll share. Um, when you read about where can I flee from you, that always strikes me because scripture is very clear about flee immorality flee evil or flee the devil or, or uh, resist the devil and he will flee. And I, I thought it was interesting that we would even think that we could flee from God, that we could go somewhere that he wouldn't be. I, I thought it was, uh, it's so the opposite of what flee in the scriptures is telling us. It's not, it never says flee God or, or and it enters my mind to oh you know I can't be transparent with God or I've got to flee so at that struck me yeah yeah it's interesting because the use of the word is definitely more associated with getting right. away from things that we should be getting away from <laughs> yeah 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 I, I I think for myself when I read that I always think of my uh, young years when I was in rebellion and um, even though I didn't ever really quit believing in God or anything like that um, and definitely when I was in trouble I always still went to him <laughs> but 
there was an aspect of me that was trying to run away and, mm -hmm. and get, get away and, and do my thing in supposed secret, even though I knew if I sat to think about it, I knew it wasn't possible. Didn't believe it was possible, but there was, there was a part of me that was trying to do that. Yeah. And, um, and I, and I think that what struck me in this was even then he was imminently present yeah, and seeking me, which puts a different um, perspective on the whole experience <laughs> of running away. <laughs> huh. So thanks. Thanks. Does anybody else have anything that they would like to share? I guess with the whole imagination thing, imagining God holding me fast, it was like a huge hand that could just engulf me. And just like a reminder of how big he is and how, and how small I am, and yet how he treasures me and holds me gently in the palm of his hand. Yeah. That's a powerful image. And that actually makes me think of, because I did write in here, that it somewhat surprised me. I don't know if any of you guys ever remember um, that cartoon Go Go Gadget. Oh yeah. And I could actually, it was like his like God's arm, his arm was like going out like Go Go Gadget would, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was like that, and uh, so that was kind of kind of made me laugh a little bit. Yeah, that's cute. And uh, and then the other thing was that. It did. I mean, it actually kind of surprised me for whatever reason. Was that I just had this sense that he was massaging all the tension out of my neck and my arms hmm. and everything. And that what did I write here? Basically, that he um, just that. He said, basically, like I could almost hear him say, I can massage the tension out of your, ne your neck, so allow me. It was just... Let me do it. Let me do it. Yeah. So it, this, it was yet another level of that surrender. Right. Know. I can't think of it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Dion. Did everybody hear that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that... that uh, Inspector Gadget, go go gadget hand. <laughs> that's a that's a cute image because that was the that was the point of Inspector Gadget. He could always use some contraption of his <laughs> to to get the job done. <laughs> that's cute. Uh, yeah. Anyone else? Um. I think. One of the thoughts, and I, I kind of shared it when in, in the middle of the readings when I when I uh, gave you some quiet and then came came back to read. But there was a couple times where the Lord put some questions or words on on my heart, so I was saying those as you noticed. Um, but I, I think the the one that uh, is standing out to me right now is just that this whole concept of the imminence of God um, following us wherever we go uh you know soaking in that concept is 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 that going to change what i behave like is it going to change you know when someone cuts me off like this morning i went out and somebody had stuffed their their stupid recycling into my just empty bin <laughs> and now i have to figure out what to do with their giant thing that fills the entire bin that I don't have room for my recycling now. Anyway, those, those kinds of petty things or bigger things, you know, there's bigger things that people have to deal with. Like you know, some people's work is really intense. I was talking to a fellow the other day who's in, in the corporate world and he's like just being barraged with hyper political correctness. And, and it's really, uh, it's really creating a lot of tension for him in, in, in the workplace because he, he, he's, he's not even supposed to refer to himself as a father because that's somehow offensive to somebody. And, and so 
um, without getting into the, a political diatribe, I, I just think, you know, there's so many contexts where there's irritations and um, attacks on our peace and, and this, this concept of, of God being present. And like Julia was expressing, you know, nestling us, holding us in the palm of his hand that we are tiny and he is huge. And if that, if we can hold on to that, that image and realize he is with us right there in the alley with the recycling bin. And I'm getting suspicious of a particular neighbor and thinking, what should I say or do? Um, is that gonna, is that realization gonna affect my interactions with people? Is it gonna affect um, my decisions more um, than if I go about my day as though he's not with me, as though he's not when he actually is. Um, I kept thinking of the omnis, you know, I don't know when I was in, when I first learned them uh, in Bible school or in Sunday school or whatever, but omnipresence, <laughs> omniscience, uh, omnipotent, all the omnis of God, that he is, he is all powerful, he is all present, he is all knowing, and, and that's who's walking around with us, that's, that's who's holding us, that's who's on our side and, and, and exploring that, you know, his, his character, uh, while reminding ourselves that that is who is with us at every moment. Um, I just want to, I just want to experience the fruit of, of that being reality in, in each moment. So, um, I guess that's part of the prayer for me, for you guys today as we reflect on, on his imminence and, and use that creative imagination to, to soak in his presence and go a little farther with, um, with our journey. Um, it, makes, it makes me wonder, you know, like in all of our lives, like what is it that distracts us? Like, where is it that we put our focus? Right. So like, you know, like I was actually asking that kind of a question because it's like, I want you to be with me. I, I know you are, but my heart is somewhere. And uh, so I want you all the time, but what is it that I am so focused on? Like, and, and I know like whether it's in business that I'm stuck in that place or whatever, but why is it that I don't say, Lord, come, like, I need you or, or whatever that I'm just so over focused in that like that is an example like yeah yeah how do we intentionally invite him yeah into our awareness in every situation which I think really the other book that I have been reading through is Michael uh, brother brother Lawrence's uh, practicing the presence of God <laughs> and uh and he's he's so cute the way he the way he phrases it, um, how he trained himself to be in the presence of God always. And, um, and he, it, a lot of it was being very intentional about not shaming himself when he didn't, when he, when he fell out of that awareness or got distracted by the business of his day or, um, or whatever, or his own interests or whatever. And, um, and yet he, he, he learned to systematically and gently uh, retrain his focus on to be on God um, in every situation. And, and I appreciated particularly the gentleness aspect because um, we are very quick to shame, blame, attack, and harass ourselves for failing at the things that we're striving for. And that produces no good thing. <laughs> so... Don't waste one's time doing that. Um, is there anything, uh, I guess I was curious also, this is sort of an aside, have, have any of you been practicing some of these things during the week um, on your own time? And if so, are you, are you noticing uh, a difference are you noticing that it's easier to relax it's easier you're getting you're kind of training yourself to to rest easier to quiet yourself easier 
Um, I'm just curious if you're noticing any of those things yet. Anyone? I find it, um, I find it an off and on thing. It's definitely, um, oh, somebody said something and my screen is so tiny I can't see it. <laughs> Uh, I find I find it uh, definitely a training thing. So I ask so that you can reflect on it and notice, but also um, just to encourage you that it it takes some practice and it takes time. If especially if especially you've come from a a busy or noisy life, and it doesn't have to be actually physically busy to be noisy. Um, you, we can be training ourselves to be distracted as well. Um, it's very easy to cruise YouTube or Facebook for hours at a time, which is counterproductive to something like this. So, so anyway, um, just to encourage you, keep, keep at it, keep trying, keep working on it. And, um, and I pray that you, that you do grow in the experiences of meeting with God. So we are, I think we're done here today, a little bit shorter than normal, but that's okay. Um, so I am just going to speak a blessing over you folks and sign off. So Lord, I just pray over each person here, um, present online, present in person, um, present in the future, if they watch the video, Lord, I just speak your blessing over them. I speak your power and your presence would manifest that there would be, uh, there would be glimpses of glory bathing of glory, inundation of glory in their future, in their time with you. Lord, that we would just get better at better at shedding the distractions and better at better at hearing your voice and noticing when you're there, noticing that you are there. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, folks. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, and Jacqueline. You're welcome. Thank Have you. A blessed week. Uh, next week, I will be back in Stony Plain. So we will meet. Oh, there's another little hello there. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll be on Zoom again from Stony Plain, unless you're in Stony Plain, and then you can we can be in person. Yippee. Restrictions are lifting out there. That's good. So anyway, okay. God bless you guys. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.